This conference will now be recorded. Hey guys, welcome back to the second part of the Terraform demo project. And my name is Adam. So before we jump into, you know, start writing our code or the infrastructure as a code using Terraform, in this session, let's understand what is the best practice. So basically, whatever that we are trying to develop, uh, the basic rule that we need to know in DevOps is you need to start storing them into a Git repository. And preferably, you have a central repository like GitHub or GitLab. Now, for this, I'm going to use GitLab. And again, when we say GitLab, you're not going to just store all your project in there, but within a Git project, we know there will be branches. And that's where you need to understand what are the different branches that you're going to have. And based on your development activity, you might have a dev branch. And then for your production, you might have a separate production branch. So what we need to do is make sure you create a repository in GitLab or GitHub. And in that, create all the necessary branches that you need and then start developing the code. And as you move forward, the code will be reviewed and it will be kind of promoted from one branch to another branch. So that's the first practice that we are going to do. And the next thing is we are going to make sure that when you are writing the code, you are not going to write all the content into a single file. So instead, you are going to start breaking them into different content. Because as soon as you do a Git clone into a machine and when you want to run Terraform, so Terraform will be reading all the .tf files from your current folder. So that is where it's always good that we divide it into different content. So that way, put your provider block and all the resource block into the file called as main.tf and any kind of user variable that you have defined so that you can put it into variable.tf. Now in Terraform, we know there are two types of variables. One is user defined variables and there are variables which are generated by the output of Terraform execution. So any such variable that you want to capture from the Terraform output is what you're going to create it as a separate file called output.tf. And in this, you put all your output variables. And when you are trying to run Terraform, we know by default Terraform creates a file called as terraform.tf state which holds the current state and that file will be available on the same directory from where you are running Terraform. Now, this is where in a production grade, instead of storing the file in the local directory, you need to make sure that you have the state file as a distributed file by storing it into a different location. Maybe you can use the Terraform cloud for it or you can use the S3 bucket to store. Now, if you are trying to store, then that information you're going to put it into a backend.tf. Okay, now let's just see quickly. So now for this demo purpose, I have created a separate project. Okay, so now this is my project. So going forward, if whenever I want to run Terraform on any machine, first I would go ahead and do a clone of this. And in this, I need to choose which is the branch, which is where make sure you have the project created and you have all the respective branches that you need where you want to develop and where you want to promote your code. Now, in this, now you just make sure you have a separate folder and in this, start putting all the contents into different files. Now, I don't have any backend specifically for now because for this practice, we will just try to store the file locally. But still, I'll put all the variables into the variables.tf and we will also put all my resource block and my provider block into main.tf. So which is what is our first best practice. Now, when you start running your Terraform code, you need to specify the provider block. And this is where if you say your provider is AWS, then you have to give the credentials for AWS. Now, as a best practice, we should not be hard coding any of your credentials in the provider content or the block because that will be stored in your main.tf and your main.tf is stored in your Git. So pretty much anyone can see. So this is where what you can do is there are different ways to achieve. The first way what you can do is if you have a Terraform machine or a machine in which you have installed Terraform. Now, let's say for this example, I have 
uh, AWS machine already created. Now in this machine, I have Terraform installed already. So in this machine, what you can do is either you can set up an environment variable, which will be storing the AWS access key and the secret key so that when you run Terraform, Terraform automatically will read the environment variable. So just to show you, now when you type env, you will be getting a list of all the environment variables. But out of that, you can see there is an environment variable called secret key and access key. So this is what Terraform is going to read because as we move on to the next video, we will try to create a provider block in which we will not give the credentials. At that time, Terraform will try to read. So how do you set this environment variable? Now, one way you can do is before you start running, you can simply say export the variable name, which is your access key or secret key and whatever is the value that you're going to put. But if you do this way, what happens? Every time when you log into this machine, you have to set. And that is when in the previous video, when I was trying to show you how a Terraform pipeline will be executed. Now you are not going to run. There will be an automation system like Jenkins, which will be connecting this to machine and it will do the clone and it will run the Terraform in it, plan and apply. So in that way, how do you set the environment variable? So one way what you can do as a solution for that is for every user, when you log in, there will be a login script. Now, in our case, we would be having a dot bash RC because I'm sorry. So the, because the default shell that we are using is bash. So that way, now, whenever I log into this machine, this default login script will run. So what you can do, the same environment variable command that you want to set, you can put into this script so that whenever the user logs in, automatically this will be set. So this is how any automation you are running, you can make sure the environment variable is already set. Now, this is one way so that only when a particular user connects to this machine, the environment variable will be set. Now, what happens as we start working, you will not be just using one environment to create the infrastructure. You might be having a dev environment, a QA environment or production. And for each one of them, you might be having different credentials. And this is where you can set up the AWS credentials in another way, where if you have already installed the AWS CLI, you can just go ahead and say AWS configure, and this will ask you the detail. Okay, I'm sorry again. So this will again ask you the details about what is the access key, what is the secret key, and which is your default region, and what is your default type of output. Now, once you give this, then Terraform will be using this file, wherein the AWS configure will create a file under the home directory, there will be a dot AWS folder and in this there will be a credentials file. Okay, now this is where I'm already here. Okay, now what you can do if you just open this file for every entry that you're running through AWS configure, it will create an entry like this, wherein you can also manually edit this file and you can put a different account. Now in this example, Whenever I run Terraform, it will always take this default account. But still, if I have a different account, I can manually edit this file and add an entry. And this is what we can give as a reference in your provider block to tell not to read the default credentials, but to read this production account credentials. Then when I run Terraform, it will be running against this credential. So this is how another way where you can be specifying what credentials that Terraform should be picking it up during runtime instead of hard coding it. Now, the next best practice, what we have to make sure is set a log level. So what happens whenever you run Terraform, it just gives some console output, but it doesn't store. So that is where it's also a good practice that each and every command that you're executing in Terraform, also gets logged at some location in the machine on a file. So this is where you can set up an environment variable called tf underscore log underscore path, 
and you can tell a name of a file okay now for example i am going to say a folder called temp and under that i will say vesva demo log.txt now in this machine whatever the terraform commands i'm going to run everything will be stored into this how that is what terraform will be reading during runtime however when you are trying to tell terraform to put all the logs you can also choose the type of the log okay or what we call it as log level and that is where in terraform there are different types of log level like whether you want the entire output like a trace or you want only debug information or you want only warnings or whether you want error so depending on it once again there is another variable that you have to set which is where we call it as tf log and you can say for example i want to track only error then equal to error or if i want everything then i can take it as a trace so this way for every execution of terraform whether you are running terraform init or plan or apply the terraform will be storing all the content here so at any point of time the content will be appended to this file so you can go to this file and use it for reference so this is how as we start writing or developing your playbook you need to make sure that you follow these best practices so that's all for the session and i'll see you in the next video and don't forget to share this video and subscribe to our channel thank you